We humans are simple creatures. Throw enough fancy words our way and we'll buy practically anything you're trying to sell us. Don't believe me? Okay, well how did the words RGB lighting make you feel? Yeah, that's what I thought. More hankering to spend your money than when the Snuggie was first announced. Companies know how susceptible we are to certain exciting descriptive terms and they use them whenever possible. But sometimes things get a little out of hand and we're presented with products slapped with countless marketing terms and buzzwords that often don't actually mean a whole lot. Which is why in this video we'll be taking a look at the most pointless, stupid, hype inducing words PC hardware companies love to shoot at our faces and that we block with the efficacy of a ninja on Adderall. So first up, VR ready. My stance on VR gaming has remained fairly consistent throughout the years. While I understand the appeal, and I'd be lying if I didn't say that it's phenomenally immersive, it's still a little too gimmicky and unrefined for my taste. Also, one of the benefits of regular gaming is that you don't have to get off the couch of your custom-made gaming chair that can do this in order to, you know, game. VR gaming, on the other hand, usually forces you to move around and do things like a complete Neanderthal. I mean, I can do things in real life already, so I don't want to physically do stuff in game too. It's also usually shockingly expensive, but that's another point entirely. Whether you like it or not, VR is taking off more and more every year, and even though there are many people like me who don't intend to use their systems for VR purposes, we like knowing that we could, which is why nowadays the term VR ready goes hand in hand with any hardware that can be justified as VR ready, even if it's probably not. When it comes to graphics cards, it makes sense to describe the more powerful ones as VR ready, since VR applications are often extremely graphically demanding. Ideally, the addition of a VR ready tag should mean you're getting a card that will provide a fantastic VR experience with games running at decent settings and at least 90 frames per second. The last part is especially important in VR since the lower the FPS, the higher chance of, of getting motion sick, so we need powerful graphics cards. Unfortunately, not all graphics cards are able to ensure that level of performance in VR, but that sure doesn't mean companies can't describe them as such. If you hop on Amazon and search the term VR ready, you'll be presented with countless graphics cards with the VR ready classification, including the GTX 1066 gig, 1070, 1070 Ti, and higher. These cards are fine for VR gaming. Not great, mind you, especially at the lower end, but fine. The only issue is that you'll also spot cards like AMD's RX 574 gig and the 1063 gig, and more than a few laptops equipped with the 1050 Ti, all claiming to be VR ready. These cards are not built for VR. Even a quick glance at the system requirements for big VR titles like Doom VFR and Fallout 4 VR will present you with requirements of a minimum asking for a GTX 1070 or a Vega 56. You could play these games with a slightly inferior hardware, sure, but you probably wouldn't want to since again, below 90 FPS and you're gonna start wanting to vomit. The absolute minimum for less demanding games like Job Simulator is a GTX 970 and even then you'll likely struggle to manage a passable frame rate because you can't dip below 90 because anytime it dips, you go blah. That's the whole point. Playing VR games at low quality settings and low frame rates isn't a good representation of the technology and it can make that motion sickness creep up faster than ever. Just because certain VR games can run on semi-capable hardware doesn't mean the hardware in question deserves to be branded VR ready. Now, while graphics cards are the main culprits here, they're certainly not the only ones and definitely not the most ridiculous ones. In the same Amazon search from earlier, you'll also come across products that have nothing to do with VR capability being marked as VR ready, including motherboards and power supplies of all things. As far as we know, pretty much all motherboards and power supplies are VR ready as long as they have enough USB 3.0 ports for all of your VR systems connectors and can actually power your rig unless they're trying to get your hookups to the VR to the power supply directly, which is not what they're doing. Heck, there are even SSDs branded as VR ready if you look hard enough. And sure, some of your VR games might load a little faster when stored on an SSD, but you know what else will? Every other freaking game. There is some minute merit to motherboards having a VR ready branding for their USB ports because that'll typically mean they have a dedicated USB controller for the ports that they intend for VR, which can empirically reduce jitter for sending out the signal to the VR headset. But I'm not gonna lie to you. I've tested these VR USB ports and I can't honestly tell a lick of difference between a normal USB port and a VR one. Maybe I'm just an unrefined swine. Maybe VR hasn't advanced to the point where we need that kind of special 
specialized hardware, but it just feels like a gimmick, even if there is some science behind it. The whole VR ready branding can be useful in that it lets people know that a particular piece of tech is good for virtual reality gaming, but it's so overused in the current market that it kind of loses its meaning. Can't wait till I get my hand on that VR ready computer case that I've always wanted. And it'll really help my immersion when I trip over it when I'm trying to play, you know, Ninja Space Blaster Pirate, what is, whatever that game's called. Ninja Pirate Training, Space Pirate Training, something like that. Anyways, next term, gaming. Gaming is cool now. I mean, it's always been cool to gamers, but it's never been more cool to most people than it is right now. Simply, the words game and gaming have become buzzwords over the past many years, and if your product doesn't include either of those words somewhere in its marketing material, it's literally unusable. If you recall one of Linus's previous videos where he details the most popular graphics cards that people pick up with his Amazon affiliate code, you'll see that if the company didn't include gaming in the title, you won't see them on the results until the eighth position. Gaming means you're gonna sell. But what does it mean when a product is branded as gaming or designed for gaming or built gaming top. Well, in an ideal world, those words would point to a product that's aimed towards gamers and comes with features that benefit actually playing video games more so than non-gaming parts. Like, you know, having anti-fatigue switches or high endurance paint on a gaming keyboard so that you don't burn out the WASD section. And sure enough, most gaming parts are just that, products built with gamers in mind products that are better for gaming purposes than others and that boost your gaming experience significantly. And then there are gaming power supplies, SSDs, fans, and gloves. Seriously, gaming gloves. Actually, out of all of the gaming products I just mentioned, the gloves are the least stupid one. At least they claim to improve grip and destroy the sweat glands in your hands. But if we take a look at the reviews, it seems like plenty of people have bought into the idea of buying gloves for gaming and have only come away highly disappointed. The rest of those products are built for gaming in the same way that PewDiePie's chair is built for sitting upright. They're just not. I mean, a gaming power supply that's not even fully modular, mind you, has no hint of RGB anywhere and uses the hideous ketchup and mustard cables that scream they belong in your grandma's PC, just like that hideous 90s design that everyone knows about but no one knows what it's actually called. What is that thing? And then I don't want to hear that your fan is gamer friendly if it only has a single colored LED. A blue light isn't a gaming focused fan. It's something that you put in a freaking Pete cellar. I don't know. Where do you put blue lights? It's like a UV light. It's like you're trying to do like 60 minutes or something. I don't know. Blue, blue isn't the color of gaming. RGB is the color of gaming, friends. Till frozen blizzard storm cooler. Look. Anyone who's ever seriously been into PC gaming knows that keeping your hardware cool is almost as important as how good it looks. Almost. The growing popularity of liquid cooling is a pretty big sign that it's something we PC gamers take pretty seriously. Everyone knows that if your CPU or graphics card thermal throttles even once, it's basically game over for your experience. Time to send it to the farm with all of your childhood pets that are totally having the time of their lives being 100% alive and all. Man, that got dark. I miss you, Fluffles. Anyways, yes, cooling performance is a legitimate factor to take into account when shopping around for something like a new GPU. That being said, the way the cooling systems of these cars are often hyped up, you'd think they'd single-handedly be capable of ending and reversing global warming. Honestly, chill frozen blizzard storm air cooling systems are not really as revolutionary as marketing teams would have you believe. They're heat sinks with a couple fans strapped to the top of them. That's it. I mean, sure, there's like engineering that goes behind them and some may have performed marginally better than the previous generation. And that's definitely something to consider. But unless there's a critical flaw in one of two of them, they're basically all the same. Buying one card over another simply because its cooling system sounds more impressive or extreme is just stupid. And th this is something that ticked me off tremendously with the launch of the Xbox One X. I'm not accusing any of you of doing this, so please don't get defensive, but you won't believe the number of times that people referred to the new X-Bone as being liquid cool. Hey, did you hear about the new water-cooled Xbox? That means it'll run games so much faster. Friends, foes, imaginary entities, vapor chamber heat pipes isn't water cooling. It isn't innovative. It's been in gaming laptops for ages. Just because the copper heat pipes have liquid in them doesn't mean that the system is being cooled by water. It's just a much more effective and more expensive way of doing air cooling. But don't worry, I've read reviewers who have referred to vapor chamber in laptops as liquid cooling before too. Hashtag triggered. I can't believe people buy into this marketing garbage and hype and promote this nonsense as something that's better than it is. I swear, if I hear one more reviewer refer to it as liquid cooling, I'm gonna pop a vein in my neck. Plug and play. What does plug and play mean? 
According to Google, it refers to devices that are intended to work perfectly when first used or connected without configuration or adjustment by the user. It's also a standard for the connection of peripherals to personal computers, whereby a device only needs to be connected to a computer in order to be configured to work perfectly. So basically, in order to be considered plug and play, a piece of hardware should be able to work flawlessly by just dropping it into your system and dropping things on the floor like I just did and connecting it up. So why then are some graphics cards labeled plug and play. Anyone who's owned an AMD card in their life knows that that's not true. <laughs> no, but seriously, anyone who's built a computer from scratch or reinstalled Windows themselves instead of passing the task on to their computer friend will know that getting your graphics card set up and working isn't as easy as installing it to the system and hooking the power connectors up. You can do that, sure, but in order to actually get the cards to ready to game, you'll need to find and install the correct drivers for it. It's not really a big deal or anything considering the drivers for the card usually comes in the box, but it's still not plug and play. And don't get me started on Windows actually installing the drivers for me because it usually installed floatware on top of it and I don't count Windows doing everything for me as plug and play. Get out of here with that crap. Things like external hard drives and RAM are plug and play because they don't really require any extra effort from the users to work other than plugging them into the system. But graphics cards should not be one of them triggers me anyways now i don't actually have a major issue with companies using hype inducing buzzwords and phrases to try to sell their products everyone does it and they wouldn't use them if they didn't work and sometimes they actually provide consumers with a decent idea of what to expect from a product my issue lies with misleading marketing terms that give less informed people unrealistic expectations of what a piece of tech is really capable of vr ready should be reserved for parts that are legitimately capable of enabling fantastic vr experiences and not a solid state drive and gaming should be used to describe products that have an actual impact on your gaming experience. Also, cooling is cooling, so calm the heck down, and plug and play should really only be used when talking about tech that is ready to go as soon as it's plugged in. And anytime I catch any company using these terms going forward, I'm going to violently shake my hands at my computer screen and seething in pure vitriol at their shameful attempts at getting me to buy a product that I'll ultimately spend all of my hard-earned YouTube money on. But what are some marketing terms that drive you up a wall? What could we include in part two on terrible marketing terms that are aimed at the computer gaming industry? Any of these terms that we mentioned that ticked you off more than others, let me know either down in the comments or over on Twitter, I'm at UFDisciple. Be sure to smash that like Likey button if you enjoyed the video get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content i am brett with the ufd tech channel thank you so much for watching and i'll see y'all in the next video cheers also be sure to let us know what you think of this type of content it's different it's different we're trying something different we're trying we're continuously trying different type of content so i want to know what you guys think i want to hear your feedback i think i enjoy making these types of videos they're just kind of cool you think about things I lay them out in ways that I've never thought of them before. I compile lists, things that tick me off all the time. And, I, you know, I just present them to you guys. Let me know what you think of it. Anyways, yeah, see you in the next video. Cheers.